We are all blessed to be placed on this earth. Some are fortunate enough to travel an easier road than others. But for those who are chosen to strengthen their character with obstacles and insurmountable challenges, the true test is what one does with the experience and information. Are you stronger or weaker? And have you used your story as a lesson to better the world and energize, uplift, and inspire the weaker? Behind the Smile is the amazing story of Fana Hodel. Who is, who is my family? You know, what is Hodel? What does that mean? I vowed one day I'd grow up and tell my story and touch people's hearts. I've reached out, I've found my birth family and they don't want anything to do with me. She was given away to a black family as a child. Jimmy Lee, her mother, didn't initially want her. If it's a question of money. She's crazy. Well, well she said she'd take the baby. Woman, well, you must think I'm dumb as a box of rocks. What you trying to sell us anyway from insurance? You don't understand. No, you don't understand. I work in the lounge for tips so I can eat. I like to eat. I was wanting a big tip. I go along with a lot of white women's shit, but this shit tops them all. She said after a while, the woman pulled out a $50 bill and she said, I would really like for you to have this baby when this baby is born. And Mama said, yeah, I sure would like to have that baby. It was all about a $50 tip, right? So they bring out the baby, me. Patty? If that baby's mixed, I'm Chinese. I used to carry around my birth certificate because my birth certificate says, Father Negro, name with health. Well, see for yourself, the dad is Negro. <laughs> and Mama said she just goes berserk. I'll see you at home tonight. Charles! She's going, I ain't taking home no goddamn white baby. What do you think my family's gonna say? Are you people out of your minds? The first task from her angels was to influence and embed in the hearts of a chosen black family the need and want to accept a white baby in their lives. This was the first in a series of lifelong signs that angels would build Fauna's character to carry on the work of angels for other people in need. <laughs> you know, new color babies is real light. She'll darken. Like toast? <laughs> Maybe it is a sign from God, you know, kind of thing. Well, you got two mamas, and it comes you adopted. What's adopted? Adopted is when one mama can't take care of you, so she gets another mama to do it. I wasn't legally adopted, but whatever that paperwork was all about to get me out the door, it had been handled. There was never a time in my life where it wasn't about the color of my skin, instead of just you as a person. In an age of extreme racism, her white complexion made it hard to exist in the black community, and her association with blacks made her life unbearable in the white community. Mama used to tell me that, um, just say that I'm your babysitter because she didn't, she didn't want people to try and t have me taken away. I, uh, Homer would tell me years later that Mama was a two-dollar trick that he picked up. Like I said, not a Shirley Temple story. <laughs> Her mother suffered from alcoholism and became abusive when drinking. My mother was in and out of jail. She was just always fighting. I know you can hear me now. Get on out here, sister. I'm gonna whoop your ass. Oh, whoop your ass so good when we all be sitting in church, you still gonna be standing. Let the church say amen. And, but in the same breath, it was a love-hate relationship. She loved me because I was her baby. Uh -huh. she died. Oh, she died like me. Oh, she died like this. Ain't sad, Dad. How she died? Oh, she died like this. Oh, she died like this. But she hated my whiteness. Stop looking at me! Stop <laughs> looking at me! Did you ever come in my room again? Do you hear me, Annie? Don't ever come in my room again! When I'm nothing, you don't come in! You don't come in without nothing! <laughs> the foundation for her life was built on adversity but the undying love she had for her mother was tested beyond comprehension. Her deep-rooted challenges were compounded with the lack of money. Despite her financial, physical, and mental battles, the angels continued to keep her strong. I was working at St. Mary's Hospital in Reno, Nevada, and a nun there befriended me. And she actually, I started giving her all this information. I was born at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, um, 
she actually went, took a trip to San Francisco, Sister Hillary was her name, and she went through all the records and she came back she, and gave me information. That was the first time ever I knew that my grandfather was a doctor, that he had an IQ higher than Einstein. She found out that her grandfather was not only a brilliant doctor, but accused of molesting his daughter Tamar when she was 11 years old. Prior to my birth, actually there was a major incest trial. She bore the last name of her grandfather, George Hodel, also accused of the most bizarre murder in Hollywood history, the Black Dahlia murder of Elizabeth Short. According to the stories that my birth mom told me, right, that her father was investigated in the Black Dahlia murder. On January 15, 1947, a woman walking her baby found a mutilated body laying on the side of the road in the Crenshaw district of Los Angeles. The body was of a woman 15 to 22, sliced in half, with a smile carved on her face. The body parts were strategically placed with her legs spread apart and gouged out body parts exposed. She had also been stabbed multiple times. This was obviously the work of an insane sexual predator. She was listed as Jane Doe No. 1 with the police department. Placed on the top of the suspect list and where all roads and fingers pointed to was Dr. George Hodel. I made a film back in 1990. We had to change all the names to protect the guilty. Alfre Woodard, Charles Dutton, Jill Claver, Tess Harper, Allison Elliott. I fulfilled my childhood dream of one day I'm going to grow up and do a movie. Of all the screenplays that I've read over the last year, this one attracted me the most because the story was so rich. What interested me first was the story. I thought it was an extraordinary story. And um, even just knowing the, the true straight story, it was, it was very intriguing to me. After an eight-week shoot with two days left until the film was complete, Production was shut down and the film was confiscated. The story behind the story is the story. There is so much, whoever did what, it's, it, the footage is actually hidden right now. Whoever got a hold of this project and layered it with so much problems. <laughs> As the years went by and multiple lessons in adversity mounted, there were two major joys and accomplishments that stood out in Fana's life. No, my oldest daughter, Yvette, is mixed, um, African-American and part of whatever I am. And then my youngest daughter is blonde and blue eyes. I was with a, my first white guy at age 28, her father, and they truly represent the color of love. And they're both dynamic, beautiful beings. So if nothing else on this planet, I've raised two women who are about the color of love. I, f I feel, and I don't know any truth of all this, but it felt like something was trying to stop me for the last time. And I really believe that as I once again called on all that I knew was my faith in God and God's angels, it felt like something broke. Fauna believes that life is a circle and that the circle of friends in her universe were strategically placed to connect the dots, complete her story, and breed life into her dream. All negative obstacles were merely building blocks to solidify a strong foundation to help the less fortunate. Although it may have appeared that Fauna's battles were continuous, the silver lining and the hidden treasures were acquired were people, friends and connections to fill the gaps. One of the greatest gifts the angels have given Fauna is realization and understanding the concept of who you are and your reason for being. She's been filled with joy and pain, but we should all be so lucky. Mm -hmm.